Live from London, this is BBC News. More than 70 people, including several children, are killed in a fire at a block of flats in Johannesburg. Well, these are live pictures from the scene as the emergency services continue searching the building. Former Transport Secretary Grant Shapps is named as the new UK Defence Secretary. Tropical storm Idalia leaves a trail of destruction after moving up the US east coast. Hello, I'm Marianne Mashiri. Welcome to BBC News Now. We start in South Africa, where more than 70 people, including several children, have died in a fire at a five-storey block of flats in Johannesburg. The emergency services said the building in the city's former business district had been abandoned and was being used by homeless people. Officials said many bodies were found pressed against a closed security gate. Dozens of people were injured and rushed to hospital. It's been described as one of the worst fire incidents in the city's recent history. The head of the emergency services in Johannesburg says the cause of the blaze is currently unclear. Leila, thank you very much indeed. Leila, our political correspondent outside Downing Street there. Around the world and across the UK, you're watching BBC News. Let's take a look at some of the other stories making headlines in the UK. Sandwich chain Pret-a-Manger has been fined £800,000 after a member of staff was trapped in a walk-in freezer at one of its London shops for two and a half hours. The woman was treated for suspected hypothermia and says she feared for her life. Pret-a-Manger says they've worked with the manufacturer to develop a solution to help this uh, stop this from happening again. Conservation charity, the RSPB, has apologised after calling Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and several of his ministers liars. The charity said its frustration at what it calls the government reneging on its environmental promises led to attacks on people, not policy. The RSPB is angry at plans to scrap water pollution restrictions for housing developments in England. Health experts are warning a proposed ban of nitrous oxide, also known as laughing gas, could stop users seeking help in hospitals. The substance, which is sold in metal canisters, can cause nerve-related issues. In a letter to the government, 15 neurologists and other health experts say possession of this drug should not be criminalised. You're live with me, Marianne Mashiri. You're watching BBC News. Search and rescue teams have been combing through damaged properties in Florida in the wake of Hurricane Idalia. Officials have warned it could take time to reach remote areas in the southeastern U.S. state with routes blocked by high water or downed trees. Efforts are being made to reconnect hundreds of thousands of people without power. Idalia, now a tropical storm, has moved across South Carolina after pummeling Georgia. In Florida, some are returning to their homes, assuming those homes still exist. Now, before we go, let's return to our top story now, and that is that more than 70 people have died and more than 50 have been injured after a fire in the South African city of Johannesburg. What pictures you're seeing now are live pictures coming into us. Uh, the building, uh, which was gutted on the inside by the fire, is apparently a five-storey building in the city centre. Uh, it was described as having been hijacked. Now, uh, that means that it was being used by squatters, people who were originally homeless were using it for shelter. Uh, they had also, in some cases, modified some parts of the building. Authorities say they're still not sure exactly what caused the blaze, uh, but the uh, sad news now is that the recovery really very much is of people who have passed away, not those who have potentially survived. Many more people have also been injured. Some of those apparently were injured uh, when trying to jump out of uh, windows. They hurt their legs and their spine. Um, we know that a number of children, including an 18-month-old baby, were also killed in this fire. Authorities say uh, that they are still investigating what was behind the blaze. As always, if you want to know more about this story, you can go to the BBC's website. And there, as you can see, is one of our live pages. These are very, very useful tools uh, and information hubs for specific stories. They are updated minute by minute. I'm here in a few minutes' time. Stay with us on the BBC.
This is BBC News. These are the latest headlines. More than 70 people, including several children, are killed in a fire at a block of flats in Johannesburg. Tropical storm Idalia leaves a trail of destruction after it moves up the east coast of the US. Spain's goalkeeper says she's disappointed that victory in the World Cup has been overshadowed by a row over the conduct of the Football Federation president. Let's go back to our top story now. It's been described as one of the worst fire incidents in Johannesburg's recent history. Officials in the South African city say more than 70 people have died in a fire in a five-story apartment building. Now, the emergency service has said it was least at least seven children are amongst the dead. Dozens have been injured. According to local authorities, the building had been abandoned and was illegally occupied by homeless people. Let's take you very briefly to see the scene live now. Um, the rescue operation is well and truly over. Police now admitting that the, uh, what we're going to be seeing is people being taken out, uh, people who have passed away, as opposed to people who have been saved. There's no, unlikely to find any more survivors. Let's cross live now and speak to our Africa correspondent, Catherine Birahanga, who joins us now. And Catherine, we talk about this building being a hijacked building. Can you explain exactly what that means and how common these types of buildings are in South Africa, around the world and across the UK? You're watching BBC News. BBC News, bringing you different stories from across the UK. Me. For more stories from across the UK, head to the BBC News website. Let's bring you some breaking news regarding the UK chain, the retailer, the big retailer, um, Wilco. Now, if you remember, uh, not long ago, the company announced that it was trying to find a buyer for its business. It was cash strapped. It was going into administration. Twelve and a half thousand jobs at risk, 400 stores across the country. Um, PwC, the chain, has been asking or looking for a buyer uh, for Wilco. There were signs maybe something was going to happen. There would be a buyer that would uh, buy the company. But we've heard in the last couple of minutes or so. Now, how many moons can you think of? Well, there's a full moon, a crescent moon, a harvest moon, to name a few. And every so often, you get to see a blue supermoon. Well, I did last night. I don't know if you did. Uh, that was the case. Uh, that's not supermoon photos, no pictures. That was the case last night as the rare astronomical event took place for the first time since 2009. It only occurs when the moon is at its closest point in the orbit around the Earth. I'm so sorry, I don't have a picture to show you. It looked a little bit like this. There you go, supermoon. Take care, see you in a minute. Live from London, this is BBC News. More than 70 people, including several children, are killed in a fire at a block of flats in Johannesburg. These are live pictures from the city as the emergency services continue searching the building. Grant Shapps is appointed as the new UK Defence Secretary and promises to continue supporting Ukraine. Tropical storm Idalia leaves a trail of destruction after moving up the east coast of the US. Hello and a very warm welcome to the programme. This is BBC News Now. I'm Marianne Mashiri. We start in South Africa where more than 70 people, including several children, have died in a fire at a five-storey block of flats in Johannesburg. The emergency services said the building in the city's former business district had been abandoned and was being used by homeless people. Officials said many bodies were found pressed against a closed security gate. Dozens of people were injured and rushed to hospital. It's been described as one of the worst fire incidents in the city's recent history. The head of the emergency services in Johannesburg says the cause of the fire is currently unclear. Well, our correspondent in Johannesburg, Pumza Fiklani, sent this report. Christian, 
uh, CBS News correspondent Christian Benavides. It's always good to talk to you and you give us a real flavour of what's happened there and the aftermath of that awful hurricane. I thank you once again. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. Let's take a look at some of the other stories making headlines. North Korea says it's fired two short-range ballistic missiles as part of a tactical nuclear strike deal drill. State media released these images and says the missiles flew around 360 kilometers before landing in the sea off the east coast of the Korean peninsula. There was no damage reported and no suggestion that actual nuclear weapons were used. Well, meanwhile, in South Korea, 11 days of so-called Ulchi Freedom Shield military drills, annual exercises held jointly with U.S. forces, are due to come to an end tomorrow. Seoul says they are a way of enhancing a response to any nuclear or missile threats from North Korea, while Pyongyang says the exercises are an aggressive rehearsal for war. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services has called on Drug Enforcement Agency to loosen federal rules on cannabis. The drug is still illegal in several federal levels, even though 40 of the 50 U.S. states have passed laws legalizing its use in some form. Cannabis is currently listed in the same class of drugs as heroin and LSD. I'm Marianne Mashiri. You're live with BBC News. Here, Grant Shapps has been appointed as the new UK Defence Secretary. Mr Shapps has previously held a number of other cabinet positions, including Transport Secretary and Energy Secretary. He succeeds Ben Wallace, who has resigned and is standing down from Parliament at the next general election. Now, a time capsule opened at the West Point US Military Academy uh, and initially thought to be completely empty has found to contain objects dating back two centuries. A closer look has revealed that the box held uh, a, metal, uh, a medal sorry, and five coins dating from between 1795 and 1828. In a statement, though, the Academy said they were embedded in the box's matrix. What does that mean for you and me? Well, we think it means they may have slipped into the cracks, as so many things do these days, at some point in the last 200 years. Stay with us on the BBC. This is BBC News, the latest headlines. More than 70 people, including several children, are killed in a fire at a block of flats in Johannesburg. Tropical storm Idalia leaves a trail of destruction after it moves up the east coast of the US. Spain's goalkeeper says she's disappointed that victory in the World Cup has been overshadowed by a row over the conduct of the Football Federation president. More now from Florida, where millions of people are struggling with the aftermath of Storm Idalia. These pictures you see here are filmed in the Tampa area, and they give you an idea of just how much water has flooded the affected areas. But overall, it seems the devastation may have been less severe than feared. The cleanup is already underway in many places, and as you can see here, among the biggest problems is clearing mud away from roads and removing trees, which were blown over. Well, much of the damage can be seen from space in satellite images. This is Ozello, north of Tampa, close to where the hurricane made landfall. This is before the torrential rains arrived. Around the world and across the UK, you are watching BBC News. I'm Marianne Mashiri and this is BBC News. The goalkeeper in Spain's World Cup winning women's football team has spoken of her disappointment that a contentious kiss has overshadowed their victory. Catalina Coyle said people who stop her on the street want to talk to her about the kiss rather than offering congratulations. During televised celebrations, the president of the Spanish Football Federation, Luis Rubiales, kissed one of Coyle's teammates on the lips. Well, Jose Carlos Cueto from BBC Mundo has spoken to the goalkeeper and he filled me in on what the details are of what she told him. Now, how many moons can you think of? Well, there's a full moon, a crescent moon, a harvest moon, to name a few, and every so often you get to see a blue supermoon. This was the case last night as the rare astronomical event took place for the first time since 2009. It only occurs when the moon is at its closest point in its orbit around the Earth. 
People all over the world got the chance to look up and see it for themselves, including me from my bedroom window last night. It was marvellous. You're watching BBC News. Stay with us. Plenty more to come at the top of the hour. Live from London, this is BBC News. More than 70 people, including several children, are killed in a fire at a block of flats in Johannesburg. People who got out described the horror. When we wake up, so we find the whole building, the fire it was all over. So other people start jumping outside. Grant Shapps is appointed as the new Defence Secretary and promises to continue supporting Ukraine. Tropical storm Idalia leaves a trail of destruction after moving up the U.S. east coast. Hello, I'm Mariam Mashiri. Welcome to BBC News Now. We start in South Africa, where more than 70 people, including several children, have died in a fire at a five-storey block of flats in Johannesburg. The emergency services said the building in the city's former business district had been abandoned and was being used by homeless people. Officials said many bodies were found pressed against a closed security gate. Dozens of people were injured and rushed to hospital. The cause hasn't yet been established and South African President Cyril Ramaphosa said the fire is a great tragedy. Our correspondent in Johannesburg, Pumza Fikhlani, sent this report. Uh, now, across the UK, this is BBC News. Let's take a look at some of the other stories making news now. And the former Conservative MP Antoinette Sambach has asked to be removed from an academic's research that connects her to a slave-owning ancestor. Malik El Nasir, named Miss Sambach, is a descendant of Samuel Sambach, a Liverpool merchant who had a stake in plantations in the West Indies. In 2021 video, she argues the links are not in the public interest. Sandwich chain pret manger has been fined £800,000 after a member of staff was trapped in a walk-in freezer at one of its London shops for two and a half hours. The woman was treated for suspected hypothermia and says she feared for her life. Pret says they've worked with the manufacturer to develop a solution to stop this from happening again. And police trying to trace a poet who went missing at a music festival have found a body during a nearby search operation. Guboyega Udubanjo was last seen at the Shambhala Music Festival in Northamptonshire at around 4am on Saturday morning. He was invited to read poetry at the event the following day. Formal identification of the body has not yet taken place. Let's cross live now to Tallahassee in Florida and take a listen to Ron DeSantis, the governor, talking about Storm Idalia. And yesterday, and they are conducting high water and welfare checks. Uh, these efforts are continuing and they will continue until there is no longer a need. How many moons can you think of? Well, we have full moon, crescent moon, harvest moon, to name just a few. So every so often you get something else. It's called a blue supermoon. That was the case last night as the rare astronomical event took place for the first time since 2009. It only occurs when the moon is at its closest point in its orbit around the Earth. People all over the world, including me in London from my bedroom window, got to take a look and see it for ourselves. Stay with us on BBC News.
now on BBC News, the latest business news from across the globe. World Business Report. A slowdown in the workshop of the world, the fallout from China's slowing economy and fresh worries about its property market. And India's economy is going great guns though, but strong growth numbers just out come as food prices continue to soar. Hello, very warm welcome to the programme. This is World Business Report. I'm Ben Thompson and we're going to start in China where latest economic data shows the country's manufacturing activity contracted for a fifth straight month. Well, the official Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index, it rose slightly to 49.7 in August. That was slightly higher than many were uh, expecting. But that figure is still below 50, which does signal a contraction. Now, it is pretty safe to say that that much-anticipated post-COVID rebound hasn't materialised just yet. There are also worries about the country's indebted property sector. Today, Moody's downgrading the Chinese property giant Country Garden once again, the firm now faces a crucial vote to avoid defaulting on a bond repayment. We're going to keep a close eye on that for you. We'll get some expert analysis for you in just a moment. But from the workshop of the world to a fast-growing economy, a very different picture in India, where the economy grew at its quickest pace in a year in the April to June quarter. It grew by 7.8%. That's thanks to strong services activity and robust demand. Uh, enviable, of course, by many countries uh, in Europe, but India's economy is actually predicted to double in size over the next eight years and become the second biggest in the world later this century. So why and what's going on right now? Our India business correspondent Nikhil Inamdar has the very latest from Mumbai. View there from Holger Schmieding. A couple of other stories for you. The US has expanded the restrictions on exports of NVIDIA artificial intelligence chips beyond China to some countries now in the Middle East. A similar move last year signalled an escalation of the crackdown on China's technological capabilities. NVIDIA says the curbs affect its A100 and H100 chips, which speed up machine learning, uh, but they say it wouldn't have immediate impacts on its results. And thousands of jobs will be lost at UBS as it absorbs Credit Suisse in a takeover that's reshaping Swiss banking. UBS reported a £23 billion profit between April and June and its first result since it bought its struggling rival. But the Merge Bank will shed 3,000 staff in the years ahead as it aims to cut costs by more than £9 billion. If you want to reach me on online, I'm at Ben Thompson TV. We'll see you very soon. Bye bye. Hello, I'm Will Perry from the BBC Sports Centre. UEFA's president, Alexander Seferin, has described the behaviour of Spanish Football Federation president, Luis Rubiales, as inappropriate, but he's called for FIFA's investigation to be allowed to run its course. Rubiales has said he won't resign after he kissed Spanish player Jenny Hermoso on the lips after their World Cup win over England. That's all the sport for now. We'll have more from us later. Bye-bye. Let's bring you some breaking news now coming into us here uh, at the BBC and its uh, concerns at schools in England. It looks like schools in England, uh, some schools in England, must immediately shut buildings made with a specific type of concrete that is prone to collapse until safety measures are taken uh, are in place. That's according to sources that say they're expecting some sort of uh, government announcement. Some schools will have to relocate children to other teaching spaces. Authorities in India's capital, Delhi, are taking steps to scare away monkeys from venues linked to the G20 summit. Life-size cutouts of grey langur monkeys, which scare smaller ones, have been put up at various places. And there are plans to deploy people trained to mimic the animal's sounds. Well, Delhi has a huge monkey population and authorities hope that these steps uh, will somehow help keep these animals from disrupting the all-important summit. 
India will, of course, as you know, be hosting the meeting of the G20 leaders on the 9th and 10th of September. Not very long then. Uh, Langyas are an aggressive type of monkey with long tails and dark faces. Uh, other monkeys seem very scared of them. And can you blame them? They're typically controlled on leads by specially trained handlers who release them once other monkeys are seen. Indian authorities are also making arrangements for providing food for the monkeys in designated sites to discourage them from lingering in search of food at the G20. Stay with us on BBC News. Hello there. The weather's looking promising this weekend and indeed into much of next week. We've got high pressure building in to bring settled, sunny, 